In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect a SQSQ to a Lambda function using Python. So the steps we need to go through here is first we need to create our Lambda function, then we need to create our queue, then we need to create a subscription from our Lambda function to that queue. So let's start by creating a Lambda function. You can either click it here or navigate to the top and type in Lambda to go to the Lambda section of the console. So we're going to click on that. We're going to go to the top right here where it says create a function. And for this exercise, we're going to leave it on author from scratch. For function name, you can call this whatever you want. Let's call this Lambda SQS processor function. That's fine with me. And for runtime, we're going to pick Python 3.9. Uh, for architecture, you may want to consider using ARM64 just because it's a little bit cheaper. It uses Graviton 2 based instances. Uh, and for permissions, we do need to make a setting change here. We need a role for our Lambda function to assume so that it has the permission to connect to our queue and process messages and all that. So there's a number of different ways that you can do this. You can create a new role from an AWS policy template. You can create a brand new role with basic Lambda permissions and then attach the related SQS permissions. The permissions that the Lambda function needs are SQS receive message, delete message, and get queue attributes. So you'll need to attach those to the role if you decide to create it. But I'm going to do it the much simpler way, which is just create a new role from AWS policy templates. We're going to click on that. You can call this role whatever you want. So let's just call it SQS processor. Doesn't really matter and click into the search box here, type in SQS to filter down. And you can see here we have an Amazon SQS Polar Permissions uh, policy template. We're gonna click on that so that we can attach it to our Lambda function. So now we're just gonna go ahead and click on create a function. Sometimes this takes a moment or so because it has to create a whole bunch of things as well, including the IAM role. Uh, so I'll come back when this is all done. All right, so it just took a moment or so. We can see at the top here that we successfully created that Lambda SQS processor function. Uh, so we can go ahead and close this now. So let's go ahead and scroll down. We're gonna to go to the code section here and we're going to modify this code so that it can successfully process a SQS message. So this is just the default stuff. We can go ahead and remove it. Uh, so before we implement anything here, I just want to show you what the body of a message will look like. For example, if you put like print event in here, this is what you'll end up seeing. And this is just a, a sample here from uh, the AWS uh, documentation. So this is the object that you can expect in the event uh, parameter. So you can see here, it's a JSON object. There's a records field. And within that is a list of entries. Now, each of these entries, I have two of them here, this entry and this entry. Um, these are two different SQS messages. One of the neat things about SQS and Lambda is that you can use batch processing. So you can have your Lambda function be invoked uh, with multiple different SQS mess messages to process within it. And so that's what the body of the event will look like. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to extract the records uh, object here. Then we need to grab out the body because the body is where the actual content of the message lives. You can see here it's test message. And similarly down here, they're using the same message. So so it's also test message. So this is the event that we want to write code that's capable of processing. So I wrote some of this code in advance so we can just drop it in here really quick. Um, so we can actually leave that print event if you really want. And let me just tab this over here so it looks right. Right, so we are extracting out the records field from the input event object, like you can see here, storing that just in a normal records variable. And then we are iterating over that records variable. So for record and records, we're extracting the body out of the message uh, from the record object now. And then we're just gonna print out that body. So very, very simple code. And in fact, what we can do is we can test this out really quick as well. Uh, so first of all, we wanna click on deploy. Let me just grab that message payload here. So this is what we need to be able to process. So what you can do is quickly test out your code to see if this works by clicking on configure test event. You can name your event whatever you want. I'm just going to paste in that uh, message here that I just showed you on screen a moment or so ago. I'm going to click on save now and we can see it was successfully saved. We can click on test to make sure this is running correctly. And you can see here that I do have an error. And it's just that body is in lowercase. So we just need to correct that really quick. So this needs to be lowercase. Let's do that again. And that switched to green. Let's test that again. And you can see here now we are outputting the two different uh, bodies of the SQS messages. So this is working as you would expect. 
Great, so I'm just gonna leave this alone for now. What I'm gonna do is duplicate tabs really quick and we're gonna go ahead and go to the SQS section of the console so we can create our queue. And we're just gonna set up a very, very simple queue with pretty much all default settings. Gonna go to create queue here. Uh, we're gonna create a standard queue. I'm just gonna call this temp. And like, we're gonna leave all this default, all the configuration here. I do have a bunch of videos where you can learn about what all this stuff means. Uh, you can check them out on my channel by searching for SQS. I just clicked on create queue there and now we just have a normal temp queue. Go back here and refresh. We have another entry here for that queue. Okay, perfect. So now what we need to do is we need to wire up this queue to our Lambda function. So you can do this either from the SQS section of the console or from the Lambda section of the console. I actually prefer to do it from the Lambda section of the console um, just because it's easier for me and there's some access to some additional settings that you may want to touch as well. Um, so we're gonna go back to the function and we just want to click on add trigger here. And it's gonna ask us for a event source. So we want to select a source. We're just gonna type in SQS into this filter box here. And now we need to select a queue that we want to select messages from. Uh, so that's going to be the temp queue. I'm gonna leave this as enable trigger disabled for now because I wanna send a couple messages into the queue before enabling it to show you the batch processing is working. Um, so one of the quick settings I wanted to talk about here, well, two of the settings are batch size and batch window. These are two very interesting settings that allow you to optimize your Lambda function so that you can invoke it with more than one message in the body. Without doing this, you would just invoke your, your Lambda function every time there's a message, which can be inefficient. It's much more efficient to grab like a whole bunch of messages all at once and then attempt to process them. So batching is by default enabled for SQS and Lambda and I believe the default here is 10 messages at once. You can set this to a really, really high number, by the way. Like you can set this to 10,000, so then you can get up to 10,000 messages all at once. Although there is a limit for how much data can fit inside a Lambda function invocation. So if you go over that, it'll give you it'll give you less messages. So I'm just gonna leave this as 10 for now. And then the batch window, this is also another interesting feature. Um, you can kind of delay your message processing for a certain period of time. So for example, if you set this value to 60 seconds, if you get, for example, one message in your queue, it's going to wait up to 60 seconds until you have a batch size of 10 or those 60 seconds expire. So this is another neat way to optimize your Lambda function so that it's not processing too many times and this will eventually save you cost in the long run. Um, so I'm gonna just leave this as zero for now, but you can play with these numbers on your own time here. For additional settings, we don't need to touch any of this. Uh, one thing I wanted to call out really quick is that report batch item failures. Uh, one of the things that you may run into if you're using batch size here greater than one is that what if you successfully process you know, seven of these messages and three of them fail? What the default behavior of SQS and Lambda is, is that it's gonna put all the 10 messages back into the queue, not just the seven that you successfully processed. So what report batch item failures allows you to do is it allows you to report back the message IDs of the ones that failed so that only the ones that you successfully processed will be deleted from the queue and the ones that failed will be put back into the queue so they can be retried. If you want to see a video on this, let me know in the comments and I can try to do that. Uh, but it's just something that I think most folks should know about. Anyways, um, that's it for that. We're going to go ahead and click on add now. So this queue should be created and now you can see it pops up here. And if we click on this guy and then scroll down a little bit, you can see we have a trigger now. We have one of them. Uh, currently, its state is disabled. And if you click on details, you can see some of the different settings that are available. Keep in mind, you're not able to modify all of these. Um, some of them are just kind of informative. Anyways, uh, that's it for the Lambda section configuration. Let's go back now to our SQS section and I quickly want to just populate our queue with some of these messages and uh, show you how batch processing works. So I'm gonna click on temp now and I'm gonna go into send and receive messages and I'm just gonna send a couple messages into the queue here. So let's just say this is message one. I'm gonna copy that and we're gonna do message two and we're also going to do message three. So now we should have three messages in our queue and nothing should be processing them because as a reminder, we have that trigger disabled on the Lambda function side. So let's just confirm all of that is working correctly. 
Um, so go back to queues, you click on refresh now, you see we have three messages that are currently available. So this is working as you would expect. So now what I wanna do is go back to our Lambda function and we are now going to enable this, um, this trigger here. So we're going to select it and then we're gonna go to edit and we're just gonna click on enable trigger. We're gonna click on save. And now you should see state is enabling. Sometimes it takes up to a minute or so, but I find that this is often delayed. Sometimes you'll see the messages disappear from your queue long before this changes to enabled. Uh, so let's see here. Yeah, it's still in enabling. Let's go check our queue really quick to see if it still has these messages in it. We're gonna click on refresh and you can see this changed to zero. So something pulled these messages out, presumably our Lambda function. So let's just go and check out if that actually happened. We're gonna go back into our Lambda function. We're gonna to go to the monitor section and then we're gonna to go to view logs in CloudWatch. This is gonna allow us to look at some of the logs, like the printing of the event ID and whatnot. So we're gonna click on that and this brings us to the CloudWatch section. And we're gonna click on the latest message here. And you can see in this event, we printed out the entire event here. So this just actually had one message in it. It was just message one here. I assume that one of the other invocations must have grabbed uh, message two and three. It could have been you know, two separate invocations or it could have been one invocation that processed two messages. This is really for Lambda to choose. Uh, so if we go back here really quick, just pressing the back button and check out some of the other log streams, it does look like it um, had three different Lambda function invocations here. Let's check this out. Yeah, so this one only processed message three, and I assume that the other one only processed message, uh, that was the same one. Uh, this one only processed message two. So batching is kind of unpredictable, but it's a little bit best effort from the Lambda function side, but that's generally how this works. If you enjoyed this video, check out the other ones on SQS on the left and right. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.